in the Lancet paper, we found 26% of all PIVCs failed. So that meant that they had to come out before treatment was completed. There was an interruption to therapy and someone else had to be found who could find another vein to place a new catheter. That 26% was almost always occlusion or infiltration. Uh, less commonly, but still really important, was accidental removal, which occurred in about 6% of catheters, despite them already having dressings in place that we hoped would hold them in. Uh, phlebitis is still occurring, so we saw that happening in about 5% of catheters, and typically that was pain. Pain was the number one reason that catheters had to come out for phlebitis. You can't improve your catheter failure rates unless you know what those failure rates are. And I think this is a big part of the problem uh, in my hospital as well as hospitals worldwide. We just don't know what the failure rates are. So of course we're monitoring infection rates which are vitally important but we need to take it down to the ward level, to the nurses level and we need to really start taking pride in uh, the success we have in keeping our PIVs working. That may take uh, as little as doing a snapshot, say, every month or every quarter, maybe monitoring, say, 20 or 50 catheters, and really starting to see if there's any trends, whether your catheters are, are being dislodged more, whether they're becoming infiltrated, and then taking uh, appropriate action. So, you know, whether it's better securement for dislodgement or better flushing for phlebitis, because uh, that would really let uh, improvements be made at the local level. The absolute number one factor that we found was significantly predicting catheter failure was the placement of the catheter, so where it was put. Placement in the hand increased not only the risk of accidental removal, but also of occlusion or infiltration. And that was a very strong predictor. It was a 245% uh, higher risk than placement in the forearm for accidental removal and about 150% higher risk for uh, occlusion or infiltration. Placement in the uh, cubital fossa or the upper arm, that was also strongly significant uh, that the catheter was going to occlude compared to placement in the forearm. So really uh, that study showed us that if you want that one catheter to keep working and leave it in longer, you really need to place it in the forearm unless there's a strong reason for not doing so. I think PIV care is everybody's responsibility, but especially it's a nursing responsibility. So we know we place many of the PIVs, but more importantly, perhaps we care for those PIVs. So once it's in, you know, it should stay in and it should stay functioning. We need to make sure that patients feel comfortable with their catheters, that they don't hurt. We need to make sure that they're secured appropriately and that we're uh, diluting and flushing our medications. And I guess it's also up to us to be uh, multidisciplinary team members and to really ensure those conversations occur about why are catheters still in if they haven't been used and there's no predicted reason for their use. Every day nurses are assessing IVs and they're documenting those assessments. But at the moment those just get filed in the chart and end up in medical records. Now that's a lot of rich data that could be used by nurses for other purposes. And I think if we can just grab that data and start analysing it, just in a very simple way, nothing complicated, but if a nurse can actually look at the infiltration rates, at the accidental removal rates, the reasons for removal in their own ward, then that can be then used as a really powerful way to engage other people in that hospital or facility to champion change. Now that change may be clinically indicated improvement, but it may be other things. So if you're finding that your dressings and your securements are just not intact, they're not dry, then that may be somewhere you need to go. If phlebitis and pain are the main issue, then maybe it's the flushing and dilution that needs to be looked at. But the message is don't just collect data and put it away in a dusty cupboard. It needs to be used and it needs to be used in a way that's going to improve PIVs. We can't have longer lasting PIVs unless we really tackle this huge problem we have of early catheter failure.